ladies and gentlemen, another day, another uh, amazing, beautiful spring as we go into great weather in Sioux Falls. Though it's windy as all get out, still warmer than it was the last two weeks. Uh, my name is Carl French Count III, it's known as CFA3. I am here with Sandy Thompson. Um, she has given me the pleasure of interviewing her today, and I feel honored to have her on board because, you know, again, more artists, more people who are from outside, maybe not Sioux Falls natives like myself, but feel like they have found their way here and search for artistry and search for themselves and search for the meaning of life. <laughs> who knows? Right. But we're here. Uh, Sandy, thank you for being here. I do appreciate it. Um, I want to say that, you know, when I first met you, I didn't know who you were. <laughs> right. And like everybody else that we meet, we don't know who they are, and then we, we start having that conversation, and we find intrigue in the conversations we have. Absolutely. So I was very excited when you were willing to be here and have this Absolutely. interview. Um, getting into where we are, uh, Sioux Falls. What are your thoughts on Sioux Falls as, as, as a place of artistry and just Sioux Falls in general? thus far since you've been here what are your what is your take in the atmosphere in regards to artists out here in Sioux Falls in this place what do you think it's beneficial you think there's been some good things out here what is your take uh, absolutely I think there's a great art community in Sioux Falls um, and I think it's growing mm. um, as an outside myself just coming into Sioux Falls um, it's just been a little little challenging to find the right niche um, and being a traveler of the country as I am, um, you know, just coming from a lot of different places. Um, but yeah, there's definitely a growing, um, and I think Sioux Falls is growing, and as Sioux Falls is growing, the art community is evolving and changing and morphing, and uh, a lot of different exciting art out and about town. Was the art community smaller uh, when you came here? And that's a little hard to say. Okay. Um, you know, one of the first people I met here, uh, as I was saying, is uh, Zach Gabar, who does have Exposure Gallery. Mm -hmm. And then I met Jess Miller Johnson, Jess, um, shortly after I had met Zach. And so I think they're really, you know, they have some amazing connections. Yeah. And, you know, just plugging into that has been pretty cool. Um, so it's, I've been here since. Um, April of 2014, so pretty much just exactly four years. Wow. And um, I, it's it's a little hard to say that it's changed. I mean, one of the first things that I started doing, um, my brother's been here, had been here a few years before me, hmm. so it was right away starting to go to uh, First Friday. Oh yeah. And yes, that's what got me here. Right. <laughs> first right? Fridays. Exactly. <laughs> you know, and and just going to. Uh, most of the places in downtown yeah. Sioux Falls, yeah. 8th and Railroad, uh, yes. you know, up and down. Uh, Phillips is yeah. a happening spot. <laughs> and uh, I think one of the first places, well, and I had been here a few times before that, mm -hmm. just visiting. And so, you know, going to Zambro's and yeah. um, Rayfeld's. Yeah, oh, yes. And, yes. yeah, and then you got to check out 8th and Railroad, you know, so, yeah. Um, and then uh, I know there's a lot of great stuff that Washington Pavilion does, yes. you know, in the community. Can't forget Washington Pavilion, of course. They have yeah. amazing things there as well. Yeah. Cool. And I had done uh, the Action Arts last year as an art instructor, so that was pretty cool. It's amazing. Yeah. So, Sandy, where where were you born? I uh, was born in Arlington Heights, Illinois, which is about 30 miles um northwest of Chicago okay and lived in Chicago for a few years um, visited there had many friends um, I, I was on the uh, east side and and like in in Sioux Falls you know things are a little bit acclimated east west sure. Chicago it's all about east west right and you know the lake is east so everything is pretty much the lake so you know you get the loop yeah and that's where the Art Institute is and or you know and then it's got all the neighborhoods you know new york's got boroughs yes. chicago more has you know neighborhoods and yeah. um you know it's very spread out wow. so i lived on the um yeah the far uh northeast side i lived close to the lake far east coast yeah 
<laughs> right? I lived, um, and then, you know, like, there's Chicago, and then there's Rogers Park, and then there's Evanston, and so I lived really close to Rogers Park in Chicago, and, you know, it was, like, taking transportation, never needed a car, you just hop on. Um, but I didn't live in, I lived in Chicago, but I moved away from Chicago in 93, and mm-hmm. then I was in, and I really nice was a suburb, um, but, you know, I had a pretty, pretty strong community, family, uh, friends there, yeah. and, you know, so then I was sort of, like, uprooting and, uh, leaving, <laughs> leaving the area, and, and then I was kind of, did a little traveling, did a little road road tripping with a little fluid yeah. from uh, 2013 through uh, coming to Sioux Falls in 2014. Man. Yeah. That is extensive. Yeah. Now, with your travels, where did you find yourself going? Uh, well, it was a lot of uh, Midwest kind of stuff. and okay. was in Michigan um, that summer. Uh, one of my brothers, I have a pretty good-sized family, so one of my brothers uh, who does the Michigan Renaissance Festival. He's been doing that for many a year, so I, I have a lot of really good friends uh, that do that show. And then from there, I went to New York. Uh, my my brother and his wife live in um, Ithaca area, okay. so and I've been going out to um, the Finger Lakes region for many many years. It's you know beautiful. I mean, South Dakota, we've got some you know incredible um, nature, yeah. but New York State is phenomenal and so I was up there for a few months and then um had gotten had gotten work through the internet um uh, through Facebook um having some of those run fair connections and um had gotten a job down in Texas so after Michigan and then New York and then I swung back and I was back in Illinois for a little bit tied up um you know business and that uh and then headed down to Texas. Wow. Yeah. Now, you said that mm, your family orientation, uh, you have a lot of siblings. Your brother was one of those who had helped kind of. How many siblings do you have? I have, I'm one of seven, so I'm six out of seven. Yeah, I have five sisters and two brothers. Okay. And thankfully, we're all healthy living. Um, I'm going to be 55 in uh, less than... uh, 12 days pretty much and yeah. yeah wow crazy and um you know being bringing the six my my younger sister just turned 50 right or 51 whatever so mm. crazy and um yeah thankfully we're all and then my oldest brother um he's here and he's 11 years older than me so he's gonna be retiring soon wow yeah yeah i just uh my sister just had her child oh wow. i am because i have become the League of Uncles, <laughs> and it is beyond me right now because yeah. just the other day she was 12, 10, yeah. you know. And yeah, my youngest nephew, he just, oh my gosh, he just turned 22, and he's doing the Peace Corps. He's in wow. uh, yeah, Guinea, Nor- Nor- Guinea, North Africa, doing the Peace Corps, yeah. That's awesome. Proud, yeah. proud aunt moment. I, I believe you. Yeah. That's awesome. So awesome. Well, uh, when it comes to family, uh, your family dynamic, what was that like? <sighs> well, um, all my siblings, except for myself and my, my one sister, they're all married. Oh. And, um, you know, like my my life was pretty much, you know, I would help help my siblings, you know, yeah. with their whatever they needed. Um, and then I had uh, moved back home a few years ago and you know, sort of like in the position where I was helping my folks, um, they traveled a lot, yeah. and then I would help, you know, whatever. So I'm sort of like a helper person. And, um, but I had, had uh, mentioned to you, um, you know, at the same time I was, you know, making time to find, you know, do, do my own thing, do right. some artwork. Um, and so, yeah, the family dynamic um, being that I was the single, uh, you know, and and I just had a lot of crushing, crushing relationships that, you know, things, whatever, didn't quite evolve. Um, So I was, you know, helping my, helping my folks out. Um, Several years back, a friend of mine kept telling me, you know, you're going to be, you're going to be the one that's going to have to take care of your folks. I'm like, 
no, 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 I'm not. And, well, when it happens, it happens. And, right. you know, you're there. And, you know, it was like, it was, it was also really strange, um, you know, like while I was going through, uh, basically, you know, caring for my dad, um, you know, unfortunately, um, he never needed to be, I didn't have to bathe him, right. he never needed me to feed him, he dressed himself, he had some dementia, yeah. um, you know, and so there were some small blessings, but, you know, I would have people tell me all the time, oh, you're an angel, you know, I was like, really? I don't think so. You know, it's just, it's just the kind of thing like, well, you're doing whatever, you're just doing it. Yeah. And, you know, it falls on you and you just do what you have to do. What were your parents like? Um, well, my dad was an anatomy teacher and, you know, so some of, like all my siblings, we have like that kind of like artist, scientist kind of thing. You know, okay. some of, some of my family, you know, more with the math and, you know, much more of um, that side of the side of the coin, you know, a little bit more science. But we're all, we all have creativity. And my dad had, uh, he was one of the first professors at a uh, community college in um, Illinois. Oh, wow. And um, he was a proud anatomy teacher, and he was one of the first, at least for a community college, to, he offered anatomy and the anatomy teacher, and to um, teach anatomy using da, 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 human cadavers. And this was wow. a very, yeah, it was a very groundbreaking, unprecedented yeah. at the time. Right. He got hired in, I believe it was probably 1967. That's when we moved into the big house, as we always called it. Yeah. And he, that's when the school opened, and he got hired there. And so... He started doing the human anatomy, mm. and you know, like when I was a when I was really little, uh, you know, one of the scary things, <laughs> um, he I walked into his bathroom and I was I don't know how old I was probably seven, six seven, mm. and he had a bucket, <laughs> and he had brought his work home. Oh jeez! And <laughs> it was um, a bucket of fetal pigs. Oh wow! <laughs> and so I never, I could, I, I after that I could never really hear the story of the three little pigs. Oh, that just destroyed you. Yeah, <laughs> but oh, man. you know, as we, as we, um, you know, grew older, we all had like you know, like we all kind of are into the macabre, and, right? You know, like our 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 the, the house we grew up in had a really cool history, right? Um, and then my mom, um whom I'm taking care of now, um, she's a little bit more of, um, I don't know, the, how, how do I describe my mother? Um, yeah, she's a strong you. personality. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, uh, what was her profession? Well, she went to, she did go to college, and she um, got a degree in chemistry. Oh, wow. And one of the science some, for sure. Wow. Yeah, and one of her first jobs uh, before she met my dad, well, they met there. Um, she worked for Abbott Laboratories, and Abbott, um, a drug company, I think they're still around. Sure. Um, so she was doing like working in the lab, and then after she met my dad, um, her basically she was mom, homemaker, um, seven kids. Mm. Uh, my parents moved and lived in Germany. And so that was sort of like my growing up, I didn't get to live in Germany. Well, you know, it was sort of like I was born, or I, they used to have to tell me, well, you were conceived in Germany. <laughs> but they had lived there, oh gosh, I think, I don't even know, five or six years. Yeah. And my dad uh, taught at, um, it was like Frankfurt American School. Yeah. And he taught there. And then... But and it was also interesting before they left, um, and this was like in the 50s, and so before they left, my dad was teaching at um, a couple of different schools in Illinois. Yeah. He taught at the school where Hillary Rodham Clinton went. Uh, I don't think she was one of his students. Sure, yeah, yeah, still. Yeah. But my father, um, okay. <laughs> yeah, um, he taught Russian. And supposedly, wow. there's a story, my mom said there might be a letter somewhere, he was accused of being... A commie professor. Yeah. yeah, of course. Interesting. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't think anything ever came of that. Right. And, you know, but then, still, yeah, the, the, the times then 
everybody was on the other yeah. sides. There was, yeah, there was a lot of that going on, yeah. I imagine. So, um, you know, they lived there, and then they came back. So, like, I would say our family, you know, heavy into education. Right. And, like, my father was a teacher. His grandfather um, ended up, his grandfather was the principal or the superintendent of Hyde Park High School, which is Hyde Park um, Obama. Oh, wow. Barack Obama. Yeah. Uh, went to, or lived in Hyde Park. Um, and my great-grandfather, so my father's grandfather, um, was at that school. Um, back then, when my grand, great-grandfather was there, you know, very different um, in terms of, you know, demographics. And, right. you know, I would say predominantly, you know, Caucasian people, uh, not 100%. But uh, they went back there um, when my grandmother, before she passed away, and uh I believe, um, like the janitor, you know, the maintenance guy was showing them around, and um, my grandmother told him, you know, said, mentioned her, that would have been her father. Right. So he went in some closet and pulled out this, it was probably about this size, this portrait of my great grandfather. Wow. So my brother now has that. That's awesome. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Back then, you know, they would have taken the principal who would have been, you know, very respected. Yes. <laughs> Interesting the, to think at the then. school, yeah. yeah, and they painted his portrait. Yeah. So then my father was a teacher, um, and then his father also was uh, the principal of I think it was Waukegan, another Northern Illinois school. Um, and then my grandparents had lived there. Um, they moved to California mm. before I was born, yeah. um, and they they lived in California. So. That was their their legacy. We would go to visit them in California, right. but you know, a lot of education in in our family. Um, you know, we really wanted every you know all my all my siblings. Um, we've all gone to college. Very blessed in that way. Not everybody graduated, but you know, everybody had the opportunity. Yeah, yeah, very fortunate. So, um, you know, as as far as. Um, that goes. Yeah. Not every, not everyone in America is able to go that route. Right. So you know, and um, when I was in Chicago, um, I did a lot of different things with different communities. Um, as I was mentioning in our pre-interview, <laughs> always have to have that pre-interview. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and where I lived in Chicago, um, when I first lived there. It was right on, I lived right off of Wilson Avenue. Okay. And in Chicago, on Wilson Avenue, probably about six, seven blocks from the lake, mm -hmm. was the American Indian Center. And it was a really old building. Um, it had been there for years. It was actually, I believe it was a school probably built in the 30s. And then by the time, like say the 50s or 60s came around, the American Indian Center um I don't know exactly who procured it. Mm -hmm. uh, there are no reservations in Illinois. Oh. So um, the, the Chicago Indian Center um, was the oldest uh, urban Indian center. And what that what happened during the 60s, um, they attracted people from all, every reservation, well, especially Wisconsin, right. um, the, the Dakotas, uh, and they attracted them, you know, like there was going to be jobs in Chicago. Right. And they would go and really want, were not finding the work. So people were actually living at the center for a while. Um, now it is closed, but it moved. Or I should say it moved. Um, but I started just volunteering there and, um, you know, established um, some really um, strong friendships. Uh, sadly, it's really hard when you move away. And a lot of my, my good friends... From the Chicago area moved away too. Some of them, uh, you know, if they were native, moved back to the reservations. Um, here in South Dakota, I have gotten in touch with one friend of mine, and um, I met her in Chicago. Uh, she is from Standing Rock, oh. and so she she now lives in um, Fort Thompson, which is right by Chamberlain. Mm. And last, what was it, two years ago? Last year, oh my gosh, I went to. Um, forgive me if I'm not pronouncing it correctly, uh, to the Shakowin, the uh, water camp gotcha. for, the, for the water carriers. Yeah. And I was able 
able to go there. Um, and so, you know, I have like a little bit of activism in my background. Um, you know, got to be. Have to be. Yeah. At least in this day and age, I feel that there's not enough going on in regards to that people who are speaking for, at least nowadays, I feel, um, more people who are speaking out for communities that are maybe not directly connected to them or theirs, yeah. but have a foundation of in their heritage. Right. You know, there are a lot right. of people who are speaking out for those who don't have a voice for themselves. Right. And I feel it's yeah. been more so now than ever. Yeah. And, you know, while I was, while I was um, doing, you know, different things with the Native community, mm. I would have people come up to me, you know, as a white person, hey, you know, you're white, you know, how is it that you're so accepted? And, I, you know, I would just say, well, you know, I just show up and I'm not, like, I'm not the great white hope. You know, I'm just there, I'm doing what is needed, um, and I'm willing to do what's needed. I'm willing to... Yeah. Judge me not on the color of my skin, but the content of my character. That's a good one. Yeah. It's not me, right? you know, know. <laughs> Martin Luther King. Right. But I feel that that is more now where people are understanding that this whole color mentality has nothing to do with being human yeah. and being a part of humanity. We have people who are struggling. Thus, it is within our, it's within ourselves to reach out and extend that hand, whether yeah. it affects us directly or not. In the end, everything that we have is going to affect us directly, right. I feel. Right. Yeah. But, you know, it, it, I had a woman once tell me that, you know, things that, that she sees, if it's not in her contextual field, it's irrelevant. Mm -hmm. But in the same sense, your contextual field is right. humanity. Right. It is you. It is right. us. It's me. It's right. And, you know, my... You know, as as one of the teachings, uh, and you know, again, y'all hear it, y'all hear it pronounced many different ways. Yeah. But um, with Akio Yasun, we are all related. Mm. Um, you know, Lakota, um, and that's you know what I what I found. Um, you know, we are we are all related, yeah. and um, you know, yes, something might not affect me directly, but that doesn't mean. You know, yeah. it's not going to affect the, the, the universe. <laughs> With that then, um, do you feel that your activism sparks some of your creativity in your artwork? Is that a big foundation up to your artwork? <sighs> Somewhat. I'm sort of all over the place. Which is and, okay. Right. You know, and um, as I've always been, I have so many things that I, that I love. It's really hard to... And I have so many things that I, I feel passionate about, mm -hmm. but, it, you know, it's really hard to focus. <laughs> but, uh, you know, absolutely, um, you know, one of the first things after after the election, you know, started getting in a little bit involved. And, you know, that was one thing that I did feel more connected with, right. um, doing the Women's March. And then... It was awesome. Yeah. That was amazing. Yeah. And then... Um, and then it was like the science march. This year I didn't really hear about the science march, but I did, um, you know, and really, uh, I don't even know, for many, many years, um, you know, I've sort of been on the, I think the first time, and I don't want to make this political, but I think, you know, like one of the first first times I ever heard about the NRA, I was like, what in the what? Yeah. And, you know, so that's really fueled me a little bit. Um and yeah, I would say the uh, the Parkland shooting definitely. Yeah. Um, I did some artwork around that a little bit, um, and I did I, I made a pretty cool awesome sign. And I did go to that um, yeah that march on uh, uh, March twenty fourth, yeah. um, and then I made I I, I still am like well I'm I'm just gonna have to send it because you know it's like you make artwork and then well if you're not selling it. I don't want to just start accumulating my own artwork. Right. So, right. you know, it's sort of like, okay, I need to give some of it. I need to yeah. get give some of it away um, and, you know, gift it, whatever, right. and create that space. So, yeah. So, I mean, definitely, you know, as, as, as like I was saying, as, you know, all the different passions that I have and, you know, I would say... Probably 
<laughs> since I've been in South Dakota, um, probably a little more political, but it's more like I'm just doing it on Facebook. Right. <laughs> it's not at 100% right. healthy for me. So. Yeah, this, uh, this whole, uh, yeah, that Cambridge, uh, whatever. That, Analytica. Yeah. And that didn't really affect me. I'm very, very fortunate. I and I, I hear it didn't affect as many people as they say it did. Um, but it was effective enough to give them an understanding of how to sway right. their the, the masses, at least in any facet. You know, you, you have the ability yeah, to Yeah, I mean, in. okay, right. I shouldn't say it's an effect to me. It, personally, I, I, didn't, I didn't see, like, you know, I wasn't hacked into or anything right. like that. But yes, definitely, it, it absolutely has affected um, the whole process. Right. And I feel like if... If what you are seeing isn't, you know, uh, on Facebook, on Instagram, these algorithms algorithms that they use to right. determine what you see, you know, yes, I can I can say, well, there's freedom in it, but if when I go on, I'm only being shown what is something that I look at, then it's almost like a pandering comedian right. who's just sitting there, right. you know, playing into the things at which I search for when. Inherently, everybody wants to be intrigued by nuances, new, not just nuances, yeah. new things, new right. ideas. Well, and yeah, you know, that, that now that I'm thinking about it, um, so yeah, right after the Parkland shooting, I actually got pretty obsessed with the whole, I mean, it, it, yeah. you know, and I was, it like, yeah, it was getting very unhealthy, yeah. um, you know, because, you know, yeah. as, as human being, um, you know, we're seeing what's going on in our country, and you know, how much it's affecting us. So then, shortly after that Parkland shooting, um, uh, something clicked, and I thought, something about Roseanne Barr. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I was like, well, I'm just gonna, you know, I've never, you know, been a fan, yeah. and what's going on. So I went on her page, and um, I started getting into, I got a little obsessed for about three days, so it wasn't too long. Um, <laughs> With a total conspiracy theory. Sure. So I did, I, and you know, from being in the community, I, I was dabbling. You know, I, was, I did a couple of uh, political cartoons, and, you know, I was doing a little bit with that. And so, like, this whole thing with uh, this Roseanne Barr, and it, it went on from there, and it was just so absurd, you know, mm. like this whole um, conspiracy thing. And and why, you know, how unhealthy that was for me, you right. know, and it's like, I do not need to, you know, get too deep into it with, because you can just, uh, you yeah. know, you can just. And I feel like that in the end has been what they did, is they found a way to make those who obsess over things like this just dig in and pry, yeah. and then, you know, the people who don't really care, they're not going to know about the importance of some of these things. So it's almost well, like... Well, some of them I hope did. Sure. Because I made it my duty to go on every single right. <laughs> site I could as far as Twitter and Facebook and spread this evil crap. Right. Oh, <laughs> spread this stuff, you know, like, this is what's going on. This is what that side is saying about our side right. and they are nuts right and see as i feel like this is why what this is here is so important mm -hmm. because for me there's always going to be political perspective yeah. there's always going to be that aspect right. but right. if we're not finding this ground that we can all stand together on and speak yeah. what we need to speak right. on and say it right. but also understand that you know if it's bad we need to make sure that we put an end right. and and revert that. But if it is good, then there's no need for people to go behind other people's back and slander somebody's name. Right, and, you and know, and, pull. and being the age that I am, or, you know, just having the experience that I have, you know, recognizing, well, it just wasn't healthy, and, right. you know, what good, was it doing good? Right. Uh, you know, and I, I, you know, basically, if you're seeing different people on the internet, and they're, you know, whatever, what they're, whatever they're doing, you know, you're calling them a troll, and at yeah. some point, well, you know, I'm kind of doing that, <laughs> and, um, you know, that is not where I want to be with right. my life and my time, but, right. you know, what, what it started out with getting, going, 
going back to the years when I first joined Facebook, it was kind of a lifesaver. Yeah. And um, it actually felt like there was purpose there for it. Yeah, well, for me personally, um, that was when I was taking care of my dad. Yeah. And um, my mom was hospitalized. And so I was basically caretaking both of them. Right. She was in the hospital. And I would be with my father. And, um, you know, I've always been where I've been able to feed, you know, my, my you know, whatever needs that I had where, you know, if I was going to go to a, you know, I was, I was very much into a program at that time. I could go to a meeting, um, you know, I could seek out whatever I, you know, if I needed, um, okay, I need some counseling right now. I've had, you know, some experiences in my life that, you know, I really needed recovery and healing from. Right. And I wasn't able to do that with my when when I was doing that with my father, and um, I got on Facebook, and you know it was like you know very instantaneous. You know it was like yeah. seeing people, um, connecting with people that um, you know some people that I had gone to high school with. Yeah, right. and you know I hadn't seen in like 25, 30 years, and okay maybe they're you know all the way across the country. I may not see them, but. It's Facebook. Still fun. Yeah, there's still a, the connection is still capable of being re, 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 replaced. Yeah, re-hashed. and you know it was interesting. You know, I'm at that I'm at the age where you know all the all the young people. You know, they're they've been raised in the internet age. Yeah. I was fortunate um, and was able to start using the internet. You know, as Oh gosh, was I in my thirties? I don't even know. Uh, you know, like one of the classes I took, um, one of the first things, and I think it was like um, an occupational class or something. Oh, wow. And the instructor, um, he like came to me and he's like, you know, you seem really intuitive, and you know that was like one of the first times um, we were starting to use the internet. Mm-hmm. And you know, I think back in the day, I was thinking, hmm, I don't know if this is going to really take off. You know, just right because like, they back then they didn't know, and it was something that. The concept of it happening and being what it was, there's right. a lot of fear behind it. Right. I feel just as the things that are coming to pass here and on your future. But oh, uh, if you guys do have any want to comment on any of the things that we had just talked about when it comes to political um, activism, yes, there's a comment box below. We're willing to have this conversation. She's going to be on board with this as well and make yeah. sure that she walks away with the YouTube, understands where, where we're at. And you might hear from her as well. And if you do have any questions, be it negative, be it you want to troll, whatever it is, <laughs> that's what it's here for. But yeah. understand, just as we will listen to yours, you will also hopefully be willing to listen to another side. And yeah. if we can bridge those gaps and we can find where our differences are, but also understand where our connections lie, we can meet each other halfway as humanity right. and as humans. Um, having an open dialogue. Having the open dialogue. Because I honestly believe, just as I've come to see with everybody I've talked to, that is going to be what helps get us out of the ruts and the hole that we have dug ourselves yeah. in, at least in this society thus far. Um, right. Before I end it, I would like to say very... Good note. Right. I like to end it on a funny note. Um, I am inspired by uh, James Lipton, who has, you know, done uh, Inside the Actors Studio. Yes. Since I could remember, I used right. to watch this guy do a lot of some of my favorite actors, actresses, oh, absolutely. all of these. So, in homage to this man, I also decided to take on the questionnaire from Bernard Pouveau, um and cool. ask these questions. Um, what is your favorite word? Oh my, I like that Bernard Bevo. No, I don't even know if I'm saying it correctly. Holy moly. Bernard Bevo. 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 My favorite word. No. And my word. Uh, it probably changes um, quite a bit. This hmm. week. This week. Oh my word. Oh gosh. Uh, come back to me on that. Okay. <laughs> uh, what is your least favorite word? I'm at a loss for words again. Golly, um, holy buckets. I think holy is buckets. Yeah, that, that was the first, and that's two words, really. Yeah. Okay. But uh, right. it was funny because I never heard it until <laughs> South Dakota, and then I kept hearing it. No, it's it's just uh, one of those colloquial. Yeah. Oh, uh, what would you say is it that turns you on? <sighs> you know, just 
connecting and, uh, you know, being able to use different elements that I've, uh, you know, different skills and plugging in and being able to reach out and, yeah, make that connection with different, all different aspects of life. Well, what turns you on? Probably apathy. Mm. You know, like, it's been challenging, um, you know, like, as an artist, um, I've also had an opportunity to um, do a little bit more with education and art and, you know, talking to some, you know, to some young people and, you know, just trying to spark them and they're like, I don't like this, you know, and, oh, well. <laughs> uh, what sound or noise do you love? <sighs> yeah, I was driving uh, by some swampy areas and just hearing, like, frogs mm. making that, and that yes. kind of cool. Tells you spring is on. Spring. Yeah, and I love hearing water sounds. That's a beautiful sound. Yeah. What is uh, a sound or noise that you do not like? <sighs> Just um, probably people, you know, disharmony. Mm. You know, people not um, talking well together. You know, that kind of thing. I understand. Uh, what is your favorite curse word? <laughs> Hmm. Ah, F in this. Ah, <laughs> F in this. You fill in the blanks, I'm sure you can. Right. Could be anything, but you fill in the blanks. Right. <laughs> um, what profession, uh, what profession would you like to attempt other than yours? Hmm, gosh, um, oh, marine biology. Hey. Yeah, that's something that I love. Would love, or you know, like I, I took a field biology class, yeah. loved it. You know, it's just like going out collecting specimens, and I'm not really into bugs, but you know, like collecting kind of creepy, creepy yeah. sea creatures. Yeah, it's funny. They say that we've explored a lot more space than we have at the bottom of our ocean. Yeah, it's amazing. I don't believe that 100, <laughs> but yeah, I hate you. Um, what <laughs> profession would you never want to try? Oh boy, um. Ooh, probably policeman. Policeman. Okay. That's the first. Yeah. All right. I think so. It's too, just too hard, you know. Sure. Like as a t uh, like like today, mm. uh, I was doing some subbing with art kids, yeah. and you know, just telling them, you know, they weren't cleaning up, they weren't listening, and you know, you just sort of have to be the policeman in the classroom, and but again, just do what we got to do. Yeah. Uh, and finally, uh, what is it you would like to see on the other side when your light in this world is extinguished? You know, just something that I don't know if we're ever going to accomplish as a human species, as a race, but just peace, harmony, um, loving each other yeah. without uh, continuing to hurt each other. And, um, but I don't really believe in reincarnation, so, <laughs> I don't know. That is could beautiful. be, could be. <laughs> well, I want to thank you again. Yes, Carl. Very Excellent. much so, Sandy. It was Sweet. a pleasure. And, yeah. um, you guys can catch some of her artwork, most of her artwork yes. thus far, um, Sandy's Art Candies. Yes, Sandy's Art Candies. And the other one, what was... Well, my Facebook name is San Sandrea, S-A-N-D-R-E-A, Jean, J-E-A-N-E. -E. My real name is Sandra Thompson, but I just do that Facebook. And, yeah, um, I'm still trying to think of my favorite word. Um, serendipity is a good one. Uh, we'll go with that. Serendipity. That's a good one. Uh, I also want to send a few shout-outs as well. We have Sam Lopez, who yeah. was awesomely, beautifully, and amazingly willing to dedicate this Absolutely. amazing piece that she had done. Uh, Very cool. Backdrop. I think this is great. Yeah. Soon it's going to be my own stuff because she has places for this to be not here anymore. But I have the blessing of having you here while I am. And as well as Dakota Light, Dakota Light Candles. If you get a chance, <laughs> check them out, dakotalight.com. Our friend Laura Peck actually has some nice. amazing uh, product for you guys if you love candles. And I think it's an amazing way to, you know, set the tone for 
any atmosphere yes. like this. So I want to thank you guys again for joining us, 88 Industries. We are here to bridge the gaps of indifference, and we would like nice. to do it one conversation at a time. So again, if you guys have any thoughts, any conversations, nice. things you'd like to say, please leave them at the comments below. And if Absolutely. you haven't already, subscribe. Please. We've got awesome people like Sandy, so say, you thank know. you, Carl. Thank you, Carol Allen. 88 is <laughs> She got a lid. Awesome. Hey, I could be a spokesman.